Good day guys, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. EOS is a big coin on the market at the moment, one of the top 5 coins with a market cap of around $15 billion. It is also a coin that is still in its ICO initial coin offering stage that is due to end at the end of this month with its main net launch on the 2nd of June 2018. Over the past few days, EOS has come under heavy FUD which has seen the price of EOS drop by about 10-15% to 15%, and a lot of people are very confused at the moment as to what to make of the FUD. Is EOS a scam or is EOS an actual good investment? I know for a fact that some people in our community are invested in this coin, so today I'm going to try and give you an explanation of the FUD and give you my personal opinion. This is not a professional opinion, just a personal opinion on these issues. To learn more, keep watching this video. The first concern about EOS is that it has no working product. This fear comes from a document that's called the EOS Token Agreement that dates back to 2017, which EOS has actually since taken down from their website. But in that article, there is a one-liner that writes, company will not configure and or launch any public blockchain platform. So then people are worried that at mainnet launch, there won't be an actual blockchain and no working product, and the whole project is a scam. Another major fad that has been going around is about fake speed. Now, EOS has always been promoted in the community as one of the fastest upcoming platforms with potential transaction speeds up to a million transactions per second. But recent test nets have been quite far from that. At the mainnet launch, the speed expected is anywhere between 1,000 to 6,000 transactions per second, which is still very fast for current blockchain technology, but obviously a far cry from 1 million transactions per second. So what I'm going to do now is to try and explain to you briefly the platform nature of EOS and address both of these concerns before we move on. Imagine that you own a piece of land that is underdeveloped at the moment. As a developer, a land developer, you can develop and make money from the land in two different ways. Firstly, you can sell or you can lay the foundations and contract a builder to build new homes and then sell these homes. You will be familiar with these neighborhoods. If you drive through a neighborhood that has been developed by a single uh, developer, you will notice that many of the houses look uh, very similar. The whole neighborhood looks very uniform. This is because they were obviously developed and built by the same developer and contractor and they have the same design and layout. The second way is to not build the houses but simply lay the foundation on which other people can come and design and build their own houses. A neighborhood that is built in this manner will look a lot more diverse. Now when we look at land that has only had the foundation done but no actual buildings built on it yet, on the surface it looks like nothing has been done. But in truth, Beneath the surface, a lot of hard work has been done. Beneath the surface would be extensive work that has been done to install piping and drainage, electricity cables, phone lines, internet lines, etc. In the same way, whilst EOS presents an open front for developers to develop their own blockchain, behind the scenes, the heavy tech stuff like the consensus algorithm, cross-chain communication work, etc. has already been done. The infrastructure has been built so that people can build blockchains easily on the EOS platform. It is not accurate to say that EOS doesn't have a working product. In fact, the EOS Dawn 2.0, 3.0 was its testnet, so it basically has a working prototype. Scam projects don't have prototypes. So it has what we call a minimum viable product already. In terms of the transaction speed of EOS, let me try to explain it this way. So on a platform like EOS, I can build an entire blockchain. Let's represent the blockchain as a house. Within the blockchain, I can try to improve the processing power of the blockchain by what is called vertical scaling. Okay, Vertical scaling is basically trying to improve the processor, the processing power of the actual blockchain. And I basically end up with a bigger and nicer looking building of blockchain. And at the moment, even though they have upgraded the building or the blockchain, the maximum transaction speed that they are looking at has a theoretical max of 8,000 transactions per second. However, besides vertical scaling, which has a limit in itself, I can also do what is called horizontal scaling. So I basically create more blockchains, so then each blockchain has a maximum of 8,000 transactions per second. So if I have three blockchains, all at 8,000, 
Now I'm looking at my platform maximum capacity of 24,000 transactions per second. If I'm EOS platform and I aim to have many users and many blockchains on my platform, theoretically then I could reach 1 million transactions per second or even more. So then those who said that EOS as a single blockchain cannot reach 1 million transactions per second would probably be sort of right. But those who say that EOS can potentially reach 1 million transactions per second as a platform, they are also right. It all depends on how you see it. The second set of FUD about EOS is regarding its token use. And the first concern is that there is no token use. Now, most of the people who are watching this video and buying EOS from the exchanges are token investors. We are not developers. We don't want to build a blockchain. We just want the token price of the token we are holding to go up. Tokens are currency, meaning if there is no use case, then there is no demand. And if there's no demand, the token price doesn't rise and our investment doesn't pay off. So again, from the same article, the EOS token agreement document last year, it writes, the EOS tokens do not have any rights, use, purpose, attributes, functionalities, or features, etc. So EOS states as well that it wants to create a zero transaction fee platform. So then people become very concerned that there will be no use case for the tokens. The other concern is that the tokens won't be swapped at mainnet. So EOS is currently an ERC20 token on the Ethereum platform. And most of the time when a blockchain project launches its own mainnet, meaning it's finished creating its own blockchain, all the tokens will be converted from the current ERC20 token, which is an Ethereum-based token, over into the native EOS token, which is a pure EOS token. But some people are concerned that this will not happen, again because of the a line taken from the token agreement written last year, which has since been taken down. And it writes here, the buyer should not expect and there is no guarantee of representation made by a company that buyer will receive any other product, services, rights, attributes, functionalities, rah, 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 including without limitation, any cryptographic tokens or digital assets, which is the native EOS tokens, now or in the future. So this point is huge, guys, because if the... ERC20 tokens are not converted or brought over to the actual EOS platform when it's launched. It means that the $15 billion worth of ERC20 tokens on the market now will all be worthless. This would qualify EOS as a scam. So let's try and explain these concerns. To start, I want to talk about the differences between disclaimer versus intent. Now, imagine that you are going to a hospital for a surgery. Before your surgery, you have to sign a consent form. The doctor who explains to you the consent form has to cover every risk involved that could be anything from an allergic reaction to scarring or possibly even death. This is called a disclaimer. Even though he has covered the possibility of you dying, of course, the surgeon or the doctor's intent is not for you to die. It would ruin his career if you did. He will try his best to achieve the best outcome. Now, imagine if a doctor described the risk to a patient and the patient got scared and pulled out of the surgery, which is fair enough, but then the patient went on to go on social media claiming that the doctor is a murderer and out to kill people intentionally. Would that be fair? Of course not, right? In fact, you might unintentionally ruin a person's, an innocent person's reputation and career. And I think the same thing is happening here with EOS. Those statements in the token agreement are meant to be a disclaimer, but some people have twisted or misunderstood them and claim that it is their intent to scam people. I don't think EOS is having a malicious intent to scam people. And just as a doctor reads the risk of a surgery to a patient, he's not trying to scare the patient. He's trying to help the patient to make an educated and informed decision. In the same way, EOS has to write the risk of investing in an ICO to an investor so that they too can make an informed, educated decision. But the difference here is that a disclaimer is written to educate and to inform, not to scam. So I hope you get the difference. So I personally see what they have written in the EOS token agreement as a disclaimer. In terms of actual use case, the website clearly outlines at least two token use case. The first is in their delegated proof of stake. 
Under this algorithm, those who hold tokens on the blockchain adopted by the EOS software may select block producers through a continuous voting system. So token holders can use their tokens to have weight in the voting process. And anyone wanting to participate in block production will have to persuade token holders to vote for them. The second use is in the use of RAM or the storage of accounts. So when you have created an account or when you want to create an account as a user, the account creator must reserve or have the RAM required to store the new account until the new account stakes token to reserve its own RAM. Also, as an example, if a blockchain based on the EOS software is launched, and if an account holds 1% of the token, total tokens distributed to that blockchain, then that account has the potential to utilize 1% of the state storage capacity. So in order to use the storage capacity of the blockchain, you have to use tokens. As a developer or a user, you can either rent those uh, that space by renting tokens from existing token holders, or you can decide to buy it outright if you have enough money. It's like having an office. You can either rent the office, if, or if you have enough money, you can buy the office outright. Now, token value comes from demand. Traditionally in blockchain, the demand comes from token used in the form of transactions because a token is a currency, so it's used as a form of money to, uh, for transactions. But in the case of EOS, transactions are free. So if someone looks for value that way, it will seem as if there is no token use for EOS. But the demand for the token comes from the lease or the rights to use the storage facility on the actual blockchain. So it's basically leasing an office use on the blockchain. So it's a completely different economy. Now you have to remember that the creator of EOS is Dan Lerima, who is the creator of Steemit. And Steemit also has an unusual token economy where they have three types of cryptocurrencies on one project instead of just uh, one currency. But strangely enough, it seems to work well on Steemit. So most blockchain projects will try to introduce just new technical features. But I get the feeling that when Dan Larima creates a project, he creates a whole new um, system. He creates a whole new economy, new governance, new tech, new everything. That's why it's hard for people to understand his projects when they first come out because it's non-intuitive for people who are already familiar with the blockchain scene. Now let's talk about the token swap. Swap Is there going to be a swap? And it looks like there will be. The reason I say it looks like there will be a token swap is because Bitfinex has already announced that they will provide full support for the upcoming EOS mainnet token swap. Um, now Bitfinex has also announced that they will be launching a decentralized exchange on EOS in the future. So if some people don't trust Bitfinex because they say, oh, they are in bed with EOS. Well, Binance, Binance is quite a trusted exchange. Uh, Binance has also announced, in fact, they announced before Bitfinex that they will support the EOS mainnet token swap. So it definitely looks like there will be a token swap. But I have to put this in here. Okay, so this is a Steemit article that has come out with some of the FAT. And in this Steemit article, it's basically a conversation where one Steemit user says, shouldn't the purchase agreement then mention that the ERC20 tokens will give you the right to EOS tokens? And then there's a reply from a Steemit user called Dan who says, no, because Block1 won't perform that task, anyone with all our open source software will. This Dan account who's saying that Block1, which is the parent company of EOS, will not perform the token swap, okay, has over 14,000 followers and all his posts are on EOS. So people are thinking it is Dan Larima and it probably is. But if it is really Dan Larima, then it makes it hard to reconcile the fact that he did say clearly that Block1, which is the parent company of EOS, won't be doing the token swap. So before the skeptics go, aha, uh -huh, this is the aha uh -huh moment where I told you it was a scam. Uh, just to point out that it was a post over 10 months ago and he didn't say that there wouldn't be a token swap. He just said that someone else would do it. To, have, to be a scam, you would have to be denying that there will be a swap. In fact, the more recent evidence from more than one sources, more than one exchanges, is pointing that there will be a swap. I did try asking the team directly as well as going on their social media, but I didn't receive any satisfactory answer to this um, issue. 
Because the information presenting here is quite conflicting, I will leave it up to you to decide whether or not you do believe there is a token swap. Now, I personally don't hold any EOS token, but if I did, because this was such a big and important issue, I would probably write to the team to request a black and white statement to clarify the details if there is any of the token swap. And given that we are less than a month for mainnet launch, I think it's reasonable to expect clarity over this issue. The next part that has been going around has been on Dan Larimer, the founder himself. And it says how he was the previous founder of BitShares and Steemit, but he left those projects to start EOS and he will probably leave EOS unfinished too. So this is really a character attack yeah, on his character. Now, I think that Dan Larimer will probably leave EOS at some point. Um, I don't think that EOS will be his project, his only project for the rest of his life. In fact, I'm going to show you a clip from an interview where he said so himself. I've made long-term commitments to block one. Um, a large part of moving on in the past was, um, you know, bit shares running out of money. Um, that's unlikely to be an issue with EOS. EOS is something I'm building so that I can build future applications on it. Uh, it's designed to be extensible, programmable, uh, and high performance. Uh, building the communities is a lot of work. Uh, starting over uh, with new blockchains is not something I do lightly. Uh, I do it only when there are intractable, intractable problems with the, with the underlying foundation. And EOS is built with so much experience from the past several projects. We've got such a great team working on it. Um, my next projects will be built on EOS, not uh, instead of EOS. So there you have it. I think it's quite clear from that clip that Dan Larimar's first loyalty will be to Block One, which is the parent company of EOS, and maybe not to EOS itself, which means that at some point he will leave EOS and launch another blockchain project under Block One, but that project will probably be on the EOS platform. Now, is this a sign that he's being irresponsible and leaving a project unfinished? I don't necessarily see it that way. Now, my impression of Dan Larimar is that he's quite an entrepreneur. He is driven to find new problems and fix the new problems that he sees. And once a working product is out, he will naturally want look to move on and start something new. So if we ourselves don't expect to stay in just one job our whole lives, we accept if we change jobs every few years, then I don't think it's unreasonable for him to leave EOS at some point to pursue something new. As long as he does it responsibly and after mainnet, and he has stuck with EOS all the way and mainnet is only a month away. So I think, you know, he's not, if he does leave, if he does, it's not irresponsible and he has actually seen the project to um, its major milestones. The last part I want to address is about their ICO. So now, normal ICOs go on for about one to two months, some even less, and usually the amount that people try to raise in an ICO is somewhere between 20 to $50 million. Some will go a lot more and some will go a bit less. Now, EOS has a really long ICO that, has, that goes on for one year, and it has no hard cap, so there is no limit to how much they have earned. And many people find this strange, and truthfully, so do I. Now, actually, Bitcoin and Ethereum both also had fundraising days where I'm not sure how much Bitcoin raised, but Ethereum raised over $2 billion. Now, they weren't called ICO in those days, but it was definitely a fundraising of the same nature as what we call an ICO today. So EOS fundraising actually isn't the longest. Bitcoin and Ethereum's fundraisings were even longer. But what I don't really get with EOS uh, ICO and it's the main reason why I've personally never invested in EOS is why there is no hard cap. Now, a fundraising is usually raising funds towards an end. So the company will calculate how much they need to pay staff to do marketing, etc. And then they will come up with a figure that they need to fundraise through their ICO. So the amounts that ICOs that are fundraising about their soft cap or hard cap, these are not amounts that are just pulled out of thin air randomly. They are carefully calculated amounts. But EOS just raises money nonstop with no limit uh, on how much they need. Their current ICO evaluation is almost $15 billion. Surely that would be enough. 
is it or how much do you need so the the no not having a cap on your ico just doesn't make sense to me and probably never will now i know that eos is a very promising project but if you look at it um in terms of comparing it to the other promising platform projects out there it seems that eos may be overvalued like is a project, a platform project that hasn't even launched its mainnet worth $15 billion at this point? I don't really know, okay? But look, it's an irrational market, okay? If you ask me, the most um, irrational coin out there is Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin is the slowest, it has the most expensive transaction speed, and I can't think of any long-term large-scale use case for Bitcoin either now or in the future. But yet Bitcoin has a market cap of $165 billion. So that, that defies logic to me. So EOS is as, as well, you know, it defies logic, but not as much as Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin can maintain that kind of market cap, so can EOS, right? But personally, as an investor, I like to go for the ICOs that have very small market cap and a lot of potential for growth. But that's just me. Also, being overvalued is not the same as being a scam. So even though I think that EOS at the moment may be a little bit overvalued and I haven't invested in it personally, it doesn't mean I go around calling it a scam. It is an unusual ICO, but every blockchain project is entitled to try things their own different ways and it's not really our place to judge. Finally, one last thing I want to point out is that EOS has real partnerships with people. They have real partnerships with FinLab, Bitfinex and more. And to some degree, this kind of news must mean something. On YouTube, all we do is speculate and guess, but none of us are professionals. But the guys who invest in them, like uh, FinLab, who is going on the $100 million joint venture with them, you can bet your buck that they do a whole lot deeper research than we have. They are a lot more professional in the way they do their research. And after all of that research, they have still come to the conclusion that EOS is worth investing in. So for me, that does inspire confidence. All right, guys, that's my explanation on the EOS fart that has been happening. I personally don't think that EOS is a scam. I think that they are a project that is trying uh, very different ways of doing things compared to other blockchain projects. I think that they have a different ICO model. They have a different technology, different governance, different economy. I think that they are trying something new, for, not for the sake of being new, but because they see a problem and they don't want to try all ways and expect a different results. As with all new things, there is a lot of unpredictability. Only time will tell if they succeed. What I feel is that even if they don't succeed, and if they weren't to succeed, if they were to fail, people would just say that they were a scam to start with, which I don't really feel is uh, very fair. The only thing that I do feel a little bit uncomfortable about after this review is the lack of a very clear statement from EOS themselves about how the token swap will be done and the utility of the token after mainnet launch. There is peripheral evidence from the exchanges to say that it will happen, but if I was an investor, I feel a lot more comfortable after hearing a definitive statement from the team themselves. Lastly, I don't hold any EOS tokens, so I don't have any incentive to make them look good on this video. I tried to do this review strictly from a neutral point of view. And also in my research, I must say I found out that a lot of these issues were brought up last year and they were already addressed last year, but somehow closer to mainnet, some people decided it was an opportune time to bring it up again and raise the fart again. Now, in blockchain at the moment, as a blockchain community, we have so many battles to fight against external big bodies like governments and banks who are trying to regulate and resist us. So I'm really not a fan of FUD because FUD can not only destroy the reputation of a project that doesn't deserve it, but you can also end up destroying the reputation of blockchain that doesn't deserve it. People outside the blockchain will have no idea uh, what blockchain is all about. They will watch one FAT video and then they will spread rumors about how blockchain space is full of scam. So FAT really benefits no one. All the above is just my own personal opinions. I'm not an EOS expert. I'm not an expert at all. I'm not a professional and I could definitely be wrong. And this guys is a disclaimer, not an intention. I'm not trying to be wrong. I'm always trying to be right, but please do your own research and make your decisions on this matter. 
If you have any further thoughts about EOS, please leave us a comment in the comment section below. Your comments will not only benefit me and teach me, but it will also give the rest of our community some food for thought. If you have found this video helpful guys, give us a like and a subscribe. Join our Telegram community to let us know what your thoughts on crypto are in general. Today's post did come from an issue that was raised on our Telegram group. So thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have a fantastic start to the weekend and we will catch you guys again very soon.